looks like I'm live, but I'm not 100% sure. Can somebody let me know if the audio is working? I think the audio is working good all right these things every time I start one of these things the beginnings always like just it's like this I'm trying to get things set up so let me just minimize that um, all right cool welcome thanks for coming um, let me just scroll through really, really quick um, so you can see the setup I have. So I'll start here, but I also have it set up kind of like this screen where you can see me and what I'll be, what I'll be drawing. And I have like some images to work from. I can also get rid of myself so you just see what I'm drawing and the, the faces that or the face I'll work from. So we'll figure that out. Um, if you have a preference, it's cool. I'm going to put it back on this for now, though, because I wanted to talk for a minute first. So I'm going to put the I'm going to put the chat back up too while I talk. So if, if you guys have any comments, I can read them. Um, but I'll probably start drawing in just a few minutes tops. So hold on one second. I'm going to start this back up so I can see. Cool. So. I'm assuming the audio is a good level too. This mic has been has given me issues in the past because it's so directional. If I'm not right on it, sometimes it's not the greatest. Um, but we'll we'll do our best. Thankfully, it's more a visual thing, um, especially once I start drawing. So it's not so imperative that that you can hear me that great. Um, anyway, I I'm like sorry. I'm like. Just totally distracted because of this so I'm gonna have to close that down all right I can't see your chats right now because I have the YouTube window closed I have too many windows on my um, computer open when I'm trying to do these live feeds I have to have like my phone going to my computer that takes up a screen and then I have like OBS open which is how I stream and then I have a preview screen open for images so it's kind of a lot to try to keep open um, before I start I've done these before in the past. It's been a while. Typically, um, I do accept tips. If you want a tip, you are welcome to. Um, I generally would put my PayPal or something up in case you want to donate a dollar or two. But right now, I'm running a Kickstarter, and you can donate a dollar if you want on Kickstarter. You don't have to order the books. So I'd rather just put the link for my Kickstarter because the money there helps me more. It helps me fund the books. Um, and the Kickstarter is doing really well. It's only been up for... Um, about a third of the campaign is done and it's already past 70 percent funded so it's looking like it will definitely fund which is great because um, you know when you order from a Kickstarter you never know are the books gonna or is, is it gonna get funded is the project gonna come to fruition I've already sent the books to the printer um, once once the once it hits 50 percent in the first you know week or whatever usually that means you're probably gonna fund so I've just sent it to the printer on my credit cards. So hopefully it'll fund because I don't get any of the money unless it does fund. In which case, that money, the um, books come out of my own pocket, which is fine. I'll sell them eventually, but it's it's obviously better if the Kickstarter works. So, um, but I'm not. This isn't. I'm not doing this for uh, promoting my Kickstarter. I'm doing this for an art lesson um, or an art tutorial. So I do want to get into it. I do want to show you though. I did print. Um, I was just curious. Oh, I gotta switch screens if I'm gonna do this really quick. So I did print like a, just like a little tiny book dummy up just to see what the art would look like. And so you can kind of see this is from the Insects Two book. Uh, there's some ant, like an ant drawing I did. 
Um, and there's a bunch more. But anyway, I just want, I'm not going to show you all of it, but these are some of the pages from that book. Um, and I had a print of the nautical one, but I didn't, I think it's downstairs, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, let me go back to the, the other one, the other screen. Sorry, this is a little bit lagging. Um, let me just go back. If you have any questions during this, um, what I'll try to do is I'll try to um, check the chat maybe like halfway through and answer questions. It's, it's really hard to look. Actually, you know what? Let me open the chat on my iPad. That would be the best way to do it. I'm going to open it on my iPad. And I also have the image that I'll be working from on my iPad. Um, but this is probably the best way. I just got to turn the volume down. Cool. So I have the chat open in case you do want to ask a question there. And I'll try to keep my eye on it. Get it out of the screen, though. And then I'll put some images up. So I wanted to do a face tutorial because, um, quite frankly, I, I've just seen a lot of face tutorials on YouTube, and they're all the same. They're always... Uh, well, I'll show you. I'll show you how I mean what I mean by when I say they're all the same. Just open this up and get set up. When I say they're all the same, what I mean is it, it's always this same mathematical formula where they start with like a circle, right? Um, I never do this formula, so this is, this might be kind of off a little bit. And then they, where this would be like where the brain would be, and then they kind of pencil in a jaw line, and then they do a circle or a, a line across the circle, like about halfway, and another line down the middle of the face. So like you know, this is the skull or whatever. This is the jaw. This line would be where the eyes are. And then you kind of pencil in the nose and the mouth. Um, along the line so you, so you know you're keeping everything symmetrical this is kind of a mess i'm just doing it quick but the point is this is a great way to draw a face if you want it you know perfectly symmetrical face keep it very mathematical and typically people who use that formula um most of their most of their drawings or their faces kind of look the same i mean you can you can stretch it. You can make a face really long and skinny using that same formula. And the formula works. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. But that's not how I draw faces. I've never drawn faces like that. And so I'm just going to show you the way that I draw them. Because it's different. Um, and I thought, you know, why not? Why not share that with you guys? And, and maybe it won't work for you. But um, I think if you practice enough, it might. And um, it'll be something different. It's always the same. I'm just... You know, you get tired of seeing the same things over and over again. So that's why I'm doing it that way. I'm not... I'm watching, like, my iPad, and now I'm nervous because it looks like I switched over a long time ago to a different screen, and it's not showing like that. Someone type in the t uh, chat to say if it's if it's lagging or if it's frozen. Because <laughs> it looks like it might be. It looks, it says it's still going, but I don't think it is. But I switched, oh, can you just see my face though? Okay, all right. It looks like everyone's saying that they can see my face and 
they can see of it is a blank page on the left or on the right so I just want to make sure because on my screen it looks like it's not like that alright cool alright that's all I wanted to make sure good to know so let me talk real quick then sorry about that sorry about that lag um, let me go through some of these images really quick and we can talk a little bit about drawing faces um, especially if you're new to drawing faces or portraits um, as you can see this face that I have up here with the guy with the cigarette he has like a really interesting face it, he's got a, a lot of great shapes in his face it's very distinct um, if you're new to drawing faces or maybe you're not new to it but you're just it's not something you think you're great at this is the type of face I would work with because if you're trying to make it look like the person that you're drawing, picking someone like this that's very unique looking, it's going to make it so much easier to do. Um, so let's, for instance, if you pick someone like this, any, any, I don't want to say any, but for the most part, you know, 25, 30 year old women are, are probably the hardest people to draw in my opinion, because their faces are so smooth that it's hard to see the shapes in their face often. Um, it's harder to see the distinction. And so to try to make it look like them can be a challenge. Whereas if you pick somebody, um, you know, like William Defoe, like this picture, this is going to be a, a great, a great one to work with because you can see this, the triangles underneath his eyes and in his cheeks and the very distinct line coming from his nose and out around his mouth. Um, there's just so much to work with here that, that you're going to be able to have an, a much easier time. Um, and if you want to try drawing women and get, get good at um, portrait, then maybe choose women that are a little bit older, just to, just to get your feel for it. And as you get better at drawing people like this, it, it becomes easier to do people that are young and very symmetrical and don't have a lot of um, character to their face or, or I, I don't know if character is the right word and I don't want to put people down for their looks or anything it's not their job to make them make their face easy to draw um, I'm just trying to let you know what I think is is the best way to go when you're just learning how to draw uh, portraits and when you're just learning it's best to pick faces that are going to be easier easier to to work with so I'm gonna draw I think I'm going to draw this guy just because um, he's got a nice a nice uh, distinct face he's got some great shapes I've put a picture of him on my iPad in front of me here and hold on there's a plane flying over me and we'll have some fun so and I don't always do it this way either. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of vine charcoal just so you can kind of... I generally would just go right in with pen, but a lot of people are scared to do that because... Um... Oh, someone's texting me. They're scared to do that because if it's pen and you can't erase it and then you're wasting paper if you mess it up. But I just go in with pen because... I'll just use white out or just keep drawing over it. I don't really care, but we'll go in with vine charcoal for now just to kind of lay things out. So with this face, you can you can start wherever you want, but I'm just kind of going to go around the eye and I'm what I'm doing is I'm laying out the sh the the shapes of this guy's face rather than drawing like the entire head and then like I like I showed before where I draw a line down the center to get the center of his face and a line across. I am just going to kind of outline the basic shapes that I, that I see that I'm going to work with. And so this is kind of around his eye. And, you know, one's bigger than the other. This is fine. In the picture, maybe they're not, they're not like that. But I'm okay with that because if it's not symmetrical, that's like actually probably going to be better. Um, but you see like under underneath this eye, there's a really great uh, shape, which is kind of like, I don't know, like a Y or something. Same on this side, but it's just going in the other direction. Kind of comes up. I'm not. 
another interesting shape. So I'm, I'm not that worried. And the cool thing about Vine is it's very light, so you can kind of... There we go. I never use use uh, Vine to start these out, but I just wanted to show you how you can do it without a pen and kind of figure out where things go. And, and the cool thing about it, like I said, it's so light, you can really work with it. So I'm just getting like really, really generic shapes. And then I'll probably go in and erase it a little bit just to get the, so I can still see those lines, but um, they're not that prominent. And you can go over it and erase it even more. So I'm going to go in with a pen a little bit um, now. Now that I have like basically where I want things to go. Um, and, and I'm going to start working. And th this is going to take a little bit of time. This isn't a time lapse. So just bear with me. Um, and I have uh, some brushes to kind of spread some ink out a little bit as I go. So I'm just going to just draw what I see and not worry too much about um, proportion. If one eye is bigger than the other, it's okay. Like you, you've obviously seen my work, you know that that's pretty typical where not, nothing's all that symmetrical. I always get phone calls when I do these stupid I like to use um, just like a uniball pen for now, and I'll go in later with a fountain pen to thicken up some of the lines, but I'm using a uniball pen because um, you can put watercolor over this without it um, bleeding too much, but it does bleed enough for, for me to get the effect I want. Whereas if I go in with, um, if I go in, this pen's kind of drying out. If I went in with a fountain pen right off the, the bat, you can't, and then you decide later you want to do like um, a little bit of watercolor in some spots, you're kind of, you're not, it's not going to work because the, that ink never really dries fully. So it just ends up with like a, a mess. Whereas these uni, these uniball pens, they kind of do dry eventually. So you get like some interesting shapes going on up here. I'm going to do like a little bit more and then I'm going to check the, the questions because I don't always know. Like I might not be explaining something right or you might have a question that I'm not answering. So I'm going to do this for a few more minutes. But if you have any questions, write them in and then I'll come and check them and answer them. And then I'll come back and, and keep on working on the face. Um, let's see. So I'm going to put that here. check and there's no questions I'll just keep going but if I do want to answer them if, if you do have them so there's a little shadow under his nose so I'm gonna do a little bit of cross a little bit of cross hatching to get to get the idea right and then I also like to kind of bleed, bleed the pen a little bit too or bleed the ink with some water I didn't put the camera on full HD because then in the stream lags and it's even worse quality so hopefully you can kind of get the idea so this will be like kind of about where the other eye is the cool thing about this too is like you can come back in and reshape things a bit if you don't get the shape of the eye just right you can you can kind of fix it by thickening, thickening up lines and reshaping them by, by doing that. So it's really not a big deal. 
if you don't get things perfectly. And don't worry, like, as you can see, like, it's, there's points during a drawing where you might feel like, nah, I don't know if it's coming out great. And then you stick with it. You might be surprised, right? I'm going to finish this eye and then I'll check for questions. Or not totally finish it, but I'm going to kind of work on it a bit. So you can see there's a lot of darkness in that eye or in the corner of this eye. So I'm going to use some water to kind of spread out that ink in this corner too. So it could have been thinner. I got to say, like, drawing live is. A challenge because it, it's actually uh, way harder than drawing normally because I'm trying to keep my head out of the way and normally I've got my head way uh, this is how I'm normally right because I'm like right up on it because I can't see very well and so I'm drawing from a really strange angle and it's not it's not conducive to how I normally draw so I'm not I don't know how this is coming out <laughs> doing my best <laughs> all right so you can see it, it's got a so I'm gonna check the um, for questions really quick everything is fine what is on your brush ink or is it just wet oh yeah David it's just a wet brush so I just basically as soon as I put the pen let me go back to the OBS as soon as I put the pen down within the first minute, if you, or even if the first two minutes, if you get a little bit of water, not too wet, but it get a little bit of water on your brush, and then you go into to that ink, you can spread it and smear it pretty nicely. Um, if you put too much water on, it can become a mess. So no, you don't need ink on the on the pen. Um, it it might look like I'm using ink because my water is so dirty, but that's just because I've been using it for a while and I'm taking the time to clean it. Um, so you see like these lines that come from his nose. These things are like, I don't know, these are some of my favorite things to, to draw and to accentuate. And that's, I think, why young people can be harder to draw because um, they often don't have very distinct features like that. I don't even think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put this cigarette in this guy's mouth. I'm just gonna leave it out. I'll do my best to kind of imagine what it would look like without the cigarette. Typically when I, when I'm drawing, I get pretty wrapped up, so. I'm, I'm also trying to walk you through it with by talking, doing my my best. This guy's got a also got a lot of stubble, so I would probably just use like a a pen to kind of dot in the stubble or a pencil, maybe even vine charcoal. Though this stuff does work well for, um, you know, you can just kind of spread it over to give someone like a five o'clock shadow. But typically, I would do that towards the end after. Um, after I've made sure that I'm done with like any any watercolor I want to do. So I'll use um, cross hatching and stuff like that in the face for That was a little too wet, but thankfully you can kind of go in there and spread that out a bit.
for refer just for reference, I got this photo off of um, Pinterest. I think I just typed in like black and white portrait or something and or black and white photography and was looking through the photographs of different people. If you guys um, enjoy art tutorials, I did a whole class on Carla Sondheim's website, um, and it's all about sketchbooking, and we go through, it's also like all professionally video, video shot, and um, so it's not like a live here, it's, it's scripted um, and really professional, so if you enjoy this type of thing, there's like six lessons all about sketchbooking, we do go through um, we do one lesson where we draw more faces. We do um, kind of minimal drawings and insects. And uh, we, it's just a lot of fun. So definitely check that out if you want to learn more. Um, it's on Carla Sondheim website. Carla Sondheim's web website. And what I'll do is in the description for this video when I um, post it after the live stream is done, I will put the link for that and the link for my um, Kickstarter because... <laughs> Um, that's where I'll be accepting tips. I don't know if you just joined recently. As I get down towards here, so I just kind of, you can see it's kind of coming together. Um, man, it really is tough to draw from this angle. I'm not making that up. Nice. So it's kind of coming together and looking like, I'm going to look over here. It's looking a little bit like the person. Um, what I would do is, and what I'll continue working and doing is, um, I'll go in further and start, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, I'll start really shaping the eyes because the eyes are like probably the most important part to a, uh, a person's face if you want it to look like them. And still, and so I'll like evaluate the, the eyes more and see like, okay, how close am I to the shape of the eyes here? Because we have to make sure that they, that they're the most accurate part of the, the portrait, if anything. If anything's accurate, it has to be them. Um, and so I will go in further and start. doing more with them. And let's see. This is really dark in here. Kind of went too far over here and I'll probably fix that with some white out later um, which is fine you can also if you dry your pen off enough or if you dry your uh, brush off enough you can kind of lift some of the darkness out if you go too dark on something and you want to fix it you can definitely do that um, you can also glue a little piece of paper from this pad like if I rip a little piece of paper and put it over it I can kind of fix that area um, which is cool. I can check the uh, chat in a second too in case there's any more questions. I'm just going to continue working on the eyes because I really want to try to at least get those fleshed out better. I've seen portraits. If you look at, uh, oh, what's that artist's name? something Piven I can't remember his first name but it's something Piven and he does portraits and he does them with found objects but man 
they're so simple and yet you know exactly who they're of, I would check his work out because he really proves a point with his with his work that you do not need a lot of details in a portrait for it to be recognizable. And I know that this is um, this tutorial was supposed to be more about drawing faces than maybe necessarily uh, drawing portraits, but I don't know. I always think think that they're just so intertwined because the whole point of drawing a face is you're drawing somebody that, um, well, you know what, maybe I'm wrong because you can draw faces that are just characters that you're creating, right? And that's actually where the, um, that mathematical formula might come in to play more, right? Because you're, you're creating something from scratch that doesn't exist, a character. And so where do you even start when you don't have a reference photo? And so that, that formula comes into play where you, you need to, um, need to have somewhere to work from. But I feel like once you get that, once you do know that formula, um, and you work with it enough, you should be able to really s stray from it, um, and still, and still be able to do a really good face that, that is, Um, what's the word I'm looking for? When everything's, oh, proportional, I guess, but do some more cross hatching in the side of the nose. Probably do, um, a ton more cross hatching as I were to keep working on this. I also like to um, pick parts of the line work where I, you know where I'll use a little bit of a brush like down here to kind of accentuate it so that I don't know when, when all the line weight is exactly the same it just kind of I don't know it bores me when I see portraits that are like that so that's why I tend to go over places and thicken some places up but not others um, having varied line weight like that is important kind of put in a little bit more stubble maybe than he has um, oh I said I was gonna check the comments to see if there was any more questions let me do that in a second here I'll continue going I would just keep going forever Uh oh I should have checked the things before what do you find makes a drawing really gratifying for you? I don't know. I, I think like probably, I'll, I'll, I I don't know how to answer that question, but I will tell you that I can't tell you how many times I've, um, I've had drawings that I just absolutely love and I'll post them on like Instagram and they'll do terribly, like hardly any likes um, comparatively to other posts. And then sometimes I'll post things that I just don't care for and they, they'll have like a, a ton of likes and, and interaction and engagement so it's just a personal thing and just because I like something doesn't mean that everyone else is gonna like it that's that's for sure Oh, I thought these were more questions, but they're, thank you for the people that took the class that are saying that they enjoyed it. My cross hatching is stiff and doesn't fit in my opinion. Cross hatching, um, I would just look at a lot of different artists cross, hat, cross hatching and see, because there's so many different ways to do it. I would recommend looking at Alan Kober and I would recommend looking at um, Ian Pollock. Those two are like kings of cross hatching and they're super loose with it um, and study how they did it and maybe try to copy how they did it. And as you do that, you'll get, you'll get better. That's kind of what I did. I, I, you know, it's not like I invented any of the stuff I'm doing really. Most of it is taken from other artists. I'm going to 
be honest. That's just what artists do. They, um, there's no artist out there that hasn't stolen techniques from other people. So, um, I would recommend looking at, at what they do and, and try to literally copy the way that they're hatching in some of your work and, and see how it works. Not copy like everything about them, but maybe just their hatching techniques. Um, try, maybe also try doing blind contour drawing and do the hatching blind too. That'll help loosen things up because you're not looking at it. Oh, I'm sorry, my volume. Ha yes, Hannock Piven, love him. Um, I'm sorry that the volume is low. I'm, I have it cranked up all the way. I'll try to speak a little louder um, and do my best. This It's just this microphone. I apologize. Let's see if I can move that a bit. So I'm, I'm I got to get a better mic. This is like a directional mic. And so because of that, you have to be like right up on it. It's okay for podcasting. Uh, that's what I do my podcast with. But as far as like... Um, this type of thing, I probably should have, uh, what do you call it? What are the other type of mic that's not like this, that picks up the whole room? Or even one that clips on. <laughs> the question about cross-hatching is actually a really good question though, because I kind of struggled with it for a while too. And I found it to be like challenging and, and I agree, it, it can be easy to be stiff with it. And then if you look at like, do some research and look up like sketch or scr uh, scratch boarding and look at some of the hatching there because that's a totally different tool they're using, you know, with like a, a knife or a blade or a little tool that they use to do the cross hatching. Um, and sometimes their cross hatching is very stiff and meticulous in them, but they still, the the draw or the illustration itself still has a really nice loose feel. So it's okay to have cross hatching that's um, stiff if it's done right. I think I'm gonna kind of go back in here, put a little bit more in this space. But you see, like. Because I haven't used, let me grab my watercolor. Because I haven't used the fountain pen yet, so I would typically go into this in a little bit and, and thicken out the lines even more with, with one of my fountain pens. This is a, a Lamy 2000, and this is a Pelican. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but once you use these, forget it. Watercolor, it, as soon as you try to go put watercolor over these, it becomes a muddy mess whereas this I could still put in some watercolor in some areas maybe not the really black areas um, especially not yet because they're still drying but you can use watercolor I'm not gonna you can put watercolor over this and it's okay so let me see if I can do it a bit maybe in the lips You can see even this is the black is bleeding a bit. So you got to be careful. I just wanted to show you that with these uniball pens, you can go over with watercolor, especially if I let this dry for like an hour. Um, then you could really go to town with watercolor pretty much over everything and it won't get really that muddy. So this guy has, I don't have much of his shirt, but I mean, we can kind of go into it a little bit. Not that that's really that important uh, for this tutorial, since we're really just doing more of like the face, but it's nice to have like, oops, perhaps a bit of the shoulders. And then you can also, I kind of, I put this too, up too high. I wasn't paying attention, right? Because you can see a lot more of his neck in that photograph. Um, but if you do this, then what you can do is, and I really put it up way too high. 
Put some nice hatching though underneath his chin to kind of put give it some de definition. Hey, for those of you who took the um, class with Carla Sondheim, I'm going to be doing another class later this year. Um, and I haven't filmed it yet for Carla's uh, website. I'd love to know your input about if you'd like me to do like a sketchbooking part two, or if you if you if there's something else that maybe you'd be interested in learning because I haven't actually done the laid out the lessons or anything for the class yet. And so I would be interested in hearing your input and um, what you'd like to, to have the class about because I'm pretty flexible. I mean, I could do a whole portrait class. I could do, I don't know, more of a collage class. <laughs> so the, the person that wrote, I see what you mean with Pollock um, I particularly, he's, first of all, all of his work is really cool, but I particularly love his, um, he has a book called, let me look it up. Actually, I have it right here. I'm going to grab it because I got time. This book that he put out, let me see, I got to get back to this so I can see myself. This book, Couples by Ian Pollock, he's, it doesn't have a ton of cross hatching, but he does some really cool stuff with the cross hatching, like, I don't know if you can kind of see. I don't want it if I get too close to the camera. It's blurry. But underneath the nose here, you can see what he's done. And in the face, um, I really wish that it wasn't as blurry as it is. But this is a great book to pick up. If yeah, I don't know if it's even still available. And mine's falling apart because I look at it so much. It's such a great book. But this book is great if you're interested in um, cross-hatching and and um, studying some technique and then this is another great book Alan Cober's Forgotten Society he's just incredible with drawing uh, faces and people um, as you can see and what I love about his drawings let me see look at this drawing of this woman um, he says like little areas where he does a ton of cross hatching and it might just look like a big black area from this camera but I consider these two people to be like the king of cross hatching so I would definitely check these books out um, both of them are probably out of print so you probably only be able to get them on eBay or something but man they're both incredible art books um, and and check out my art books too I have two that are I'm gonna do a shameless plug again I have two that you can pre-order right now on Kickstarter and um, there's a lot of cross hatching in those books too. So there's some, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Let's see. Going back to the OBS so I can get started. I don't know. I'm not going to continue to go too much into detail. I think I'm going to do a little bit more with the, um, I'll finish this guy's five o'clock shadow out and show you how I would maybe do that. You know what else works good for like a five o'clock shadow? Um, is to use some blue dots too, because if you ever look at somebody who has, hasn't shaved in a day or two, there's like a blue, I don't know why, but there's like a, a blueness to that part of their face where the hair's growing in. It's really strange, so I like to use a blue uniball pen sometimes for some of the dots when I'm doing like a something like this. And you can even, I'll show you in a second, another thing I like to do. Once you get to dots, this is not nearly enough. I'd probably put three times this many in. But if you use a little bit of water over the blue, you can kind of spread that blue color just slightly.
I don't know if it's coming through that well on the video, but then when it's wet, you can kind of go back in with some more dots and they'll start to spread a bit because of the water. Does this take the, um, I'm kind of curious. I have a question for you guys and I'll look at your answers in the chat. Does this take like the magic out of art for you? Whenever I see art, um, how do I word this? I don't know. When I, whenever I see someone like Ralph Steadman, if I watch his videos of him drawing to me, um, it doesn't, it doesn't take like the magic out. I still think it's really cool, but I don't, I wonder sometimes if, if you really like an artist and then you actually watch them work, maybe it's like seeing the process ruins it or something. I didn't know. Oh, good. It doesn't. Some people, I think some people probably are like me where I, they like to see the process. They, it doesn't ruin it. And you know, like this is how it, this is how my drawings generally will come together. I'll just keep working at them until I'm happy. And I can't even show you a, a cheat that I do. Right. I'm going to show you a cheat that you might if you have an iPad, um, this is a trick that I would tech, I would use, and I'll show you what I do. Sometimes, not all the time, but if I'm having trouble visualizing where a piece is going to go, what I will do is I'll photograph the piece. So I'm just going to pull my iPad up far enough to photograph it. I just photograph the piece on my iPad, and then... I will bring that photograph into Procreate. So I'm going to put, uh, this might be hard to see because of the glare. But now I've put it in Procreate, the pho this drawing I just did. And I can get um, like a watercolor brush out. And I can like, as you can see, I can kind of put some color into the face and see where, maybe where I, what I want to do and I and I'll try things out so if I'm not sure exactly where I want to take a piece and I get get it to a certain point I'll photograph it and then I'll bring it into my iPad and I'll work at it a bit and see like tr maybe I'll do something or or not even necessarily this let's say I really think I want to do like some some color underneath the eyes on this this um, portrait but I'm, I'm not sure how it's gonna work I'll bring it into my iPad and do it and then I'll, maybe sometimes I'll be surprised and I'll say, yeah, it doesn't really work like I thought it would. And so I'm glad I did it on my iPad first before putting it down on paper. So I don't do this as often as I used to because I've become a lot more confident and comfortable with just drawing. But I used to, I used to do that all the time. And so I recommend it to people because if you're not as confident, it's a good way to grow your confidence and to say like, because you'll, you'll come to realize that a lot of the decisions that you make or that you think you're going to make, you do it on the iPad and you'll say, oh yeah, it does look just like I thought and, and I do want to do it. And so you'll start gaining confidence in yourself and, and your decision-making ability. Um, so I would, yeah, it, it's not a, so someone says brilliant tip with Procreate on iPad. Um, it's, it's a great idea for, I mean, you're crazy not to do it if you have an iPad. You can try things out before you commit to them. If you're, especially if you're nervous about something in particular that you're not sure if it's going to work, why not do that? So I'm not going to continue on this drawing. You get the point. Um, that's how I draw faces. So I just kind of, and you saw, I use the, um, I'll kind of go into this a little bit more with this to show you with like a vine, you can even get the um, five o'clock shadow even more. But the point is, don't, if you can, get away from the circle, jaw, you know, cross 
grid line way of drawing faces just to get everything perfectly symmetrical because symmetry is not always the best way to go with with drawing it does it's not always interesting asymmetrical drawing is almost always more visually appealing in my opinion um anyway i'm just reading the comments uh so this is this is what i wanted to show you guys today i hope you enjoyed it i i really i'm gonna try to do these more often i did a bunch last summer and um because COVID just started and people were just sitting around bored. But now I feel like more people are back to work and, and living their lives normal so they don't have as much time. Um, but I, I should try to, to at least do one a month or something. And like I said, if you if you want to check out, oops, I could switch. If you want to check out more um, lessons and things like that, I have a sketchbooking class on Carla Sondheim. Um, and if you'd like to tip for for what you enjoyed today and if you have a couple bucks definitely there's a i'm going to put a link to my kickstarter there's one in the chat but i'm going to put one in the description on the video no no pressure but if you feel like you want to that's where i'd like the tips to go rather than paypal i think that that would help me more because it helps my campaign and helps my books be produced and um, i can't believe that i've been working professionally as an artist for really only about four years professionally and i'm on my sixth book so the fact that I've managed to put out six books just shows that um, I have a lot of people that are very supportive of what I do um, because they've, they've all been done through like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo and it's thanks to you guys that, that these things are produced. Um, if nobody cared about my art or nobody cared what I was doing, none of that stuff would have been produced because I don't have the money to just put things out for no reason. I put them out because there's people that are interested in looking at them. So. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, have a great day, guys, and thank you for joining.